Hey everybody, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to episode 5 of Surviving the Aftermath, which originally streamed live on Twitch. Oh, I am starting to get some additional sick, so let me open up my second medical tent. Oddly enough, they're infected. They're not hypothermic, so I guess I've been doing a good job uh, fighting the cold. And you guys voted on flushing, so I actually hadn't queued that up. Let me go get that. And have you vote on next research. So, again, I'll cover the options. I know it's getting a little boring, but survival, uh, better hunting, better farming, advanced farms, ranching with, for food. Resources would be trading or plastic metal or apprenticeships for more uh, tailors. Infrastructure would be heat. Uh, community would be better housing. And then safety would be either the colony center upgrade or secure storing. For general storage, that leads to a secure, a bigger gate. Yep. If you want my population to go up, here's a little tip. I'm slightly putting my thumb on the scale. So there's a few things to consider here when we're voting on research. Um, so I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna spend a second to give you a little bit bigger picture. Uh, getting safety upgrades eventually leads to hazmat engineering, which allows me to clean up um, pollution sites. In order to get hazmat engineering, there's a few other requirements first. I'm gonna need concrete and power. So power uh, comes from infrastructure for solar power. And then concrete comes from resources uh, down here, concrete scavenging. So if you want me to be able to clean up pollution to be able to make um, larger areas that are protected from pollution, um, getting concrete scavenging and getting solar power is paramount. Uh, so that's one sort of leap in my technology. Uh, another leap in technology would be for me to um, start ranching and farming and irrigating. Uh, so that would dramatically increase the amount of food that I could make or aquaculture too. Uh, so those are those are two big sort of jumps. Also, bartering is pretty nice as well. Um, so that's me slightly putting a thumb on the scale of just like these are bigger picture. If I look down the line, hazmat engineering is pretty significant, but it does require concrete and power. Um, but that, 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 and then, and then the other, the other thumb on the scale is if you want my population to grow, it's very, very helpful to have better housing and very helpful to have, uh, memorials and brawl pits in order to keep them happy because a happy populace, uh, procreates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I could either head towards pollution cleanup uh, to get rid of all these little pollution sites or head towards a happy population to to grow. I could also set up um, I could set up uh, an outpost to attract survivors. So that that too. When am I building the school? Thank you for the reminder, Aguvin. Uh, let me build the school now. So the school doesn't really have a radius. You could just kind of build it anywhere you want. It, uh, it doesn't have a required spot or anything like that. Um... Uh, so I'm going to build my school up here next to the burner. It's a very, very expensive building, as you can see. Very costly. Uh, but the benefits are pretty awesome, where you get um, a permanent uh, efficiency bonus. And... Mission complete. Harry Larry has scouted again. Uh, Harry Larry, let's have you audible back to the plane Found now. Found something. Your orders... All right, Fangface is heading out to the guns. Mission complete. Big Nate finished with the airport. Your command. And will... Hmm. Head Can to the do. other guns. We're going to get a lot of guns here, I guess. And then Skyjacker's just doing his own thing on the map tile. Cleaning up some boar meat. There are survivors at the gate. Oh, survivors at the gate. Speaking of uh, increasing our population... Ragged bunch shuffled slowly towards the gate. All right, you guys voted community. Got it. So there is three choices here. 
although one of the choices is not really a choice. Ignore for now. So one adult, one child, three elders. They come with a little beef jerky, a few sturdy clothing. Um, I can accept them, reject them, ignore for now. Uh, I'm going to ignore for now and then and then go with what you vote on in a minute. New feet, Edge. Thanks for the bits. And Vegacock, Chew. Thank you for the, uh, the follow. I wonder how long this uh, winter storm is going to last. Well, either way, my firewood production has nearly kept up with consumption, so I'm not immediately worried. If it lasts longer, it's fine. Hey, Veggie, not only did you follow, you subbed. Cheers. Flushing is almost done being researched, and that will allow me to upgrade these outhouses to toilets so that we can happily poo. Now, as I add stuff like toilets and cookhouses, we are going to consume more water, so I'm going to also want to keep an eye on that so that uh, I appropriately add additional water wells to keep up with our water usage. But uh, we have a lot of overhead right now. We have a, a balance of positive 27, so I, I don't, I'm not worried at the moment. And let's go add these guys, because that was the overwhelming choice. And flushing just got done. Um, the next thing that you voted on was community, was it not? So I'm going to get communal living and throw the next research on yet again. I'm not going to explain the options. I'll explain the options like every other third poll unless the choices have significantly changed so that I'm not constantly repeating myself. So with the toilets, let's confirm this upgrade. Go for toilets. And in fact, uh, let's get four toilets. There's probably more toilets than I need, but I like to, I like to happy poo. I, I don't want to wait in line. I'm glad I'm a man for that reason. Not that I've used a public toilet in like years. It's honestly been like three years now that I think about it. Because I, I don't find myself uh, going out dining like I used to. We've reached a milestone. Iterative of progress. So this is a new milestone of us upgrading f at least five buildings in the colony. So we had upgraded our hunting to or skin it, uh, trapping to hunting. We upgraded a toilet. Uh, what else did we upgrade? I don't even know. But stuff got upgraded, so cool. So there's two toilets. Uh, now that we have those two toilets, we can just uh, demolish these old houses. And eventually what will happen is, because the source of pollution will go away, the pollution will eventually go away on its own. And as you can see here, 18 uh, wood, 14 plastic yielded. And it costs 25 and 20, so you don't get full uh, refund. You get partial refund. Now, you do get full refund if you destroy it before it's fully built. So if I chose to cancel the construction of the school, all the wood, plastic, and metal would get refunded. Uh, but only if I do it before it's fully built. Another way to do these polls here is to say, uh, what should I focus on um, for research? Should I focus on uh, pollution removal or colony happiness? I guess that's what I can I can start queue to queue up. I also have two homeless um, colonists, which is not good. So I'm going to add two more tents, but then very soon it seems like I'm going to be headed to shanties. Shanties is the next tier of housing because we're getting communal living now. Yes? Okay. How may I help you? Of course. What you need? What do we have here? Okay, so my next research will be something in the resource tree and then I'll change the way I ask the question. Uh, so let's go for bartering. 
queued up after communal housing. Okay, plastic source has been depleted. So taking a look at these plastic sources, this is richness 93%, so that's definitely the highest richness that I've had so far. So that's probably going to be my underground mine. But let's queue up another surface plastic so I don't halt plastic income. Uh, yeah, there's two of them over here. And what that to me means, I can now comfortably build on top of this plastic and on top of that plastic because it's not likely that I'm going to need what's underneath it. Let's also queue uh, this tent to be built next so that our homeless people are housed because sleeping on the ground sucks, especially in a uh, winter storm like this. Oh, I had a settler die of old age and I need to deal with their body. Thank you, Sky. Yes, you're right. I'm gonna put someone working in the barrel site. And taking a look at my resources. My wood is coming. It's, uh, my wood is dropping. Uh, but What's what I up? could do is, uh, Skyjacker. Oh, you know what? There is no more wood to be collected by hand, is there? So never mind. I was going to have my specialist start collecting wood manually, but um, that's just not something I can do. We've made a new discovery. So bartering is getting researched now, which will allow me to trade with the one of the two colonies that I've discovered so far. What's up? Just making sure huh? that my people are on track to, to do their tasks. They are. And I'm rewriting the way I... Uh... So this is a different way to ask the research question. So, the question is, what major project should I work towards? Uh, colony happiness for birth rate, uh, pollution removal, or securing a more reliable source of food. You know, better farming, fishing, etc. Hey, I have my first hypothermic person. I don't know why I'm excited about that. And we just had someone born a second ago. Uh, how many houses do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. 12, uh, so 36, so I have room for three more people to be born or join. That's not a lot of overhead, so let me add another 10. I could also start working on a shanty. Uh, so if I started on a shanty, one of the things I would, might want to do is I might want to start a new burner and then plan to build the shanty town around the burner. Um, so let me analyze real quick my pollution map so is to figure out where I could so this zone here, I could uh, set up a, a new shanty town. Right now, it has a bunch of plastic in the middle of it, though. So that's it's going to be a while for this plastic to uh, to get harvested. So that might not be a good zone. I could put it out here, but this is kind of beyond the edge of my colony. Um, hmm. Because of the pollution, there's not a lot of good spots for it. I could put it, I could try to nestle it in, oh, nestle it in uh, here. Start building uh, shanties here, and then and then building towards a, a burner. Maybe that's what I'll do. This spot is non-fertile, and it only has one pollution spot nearby. The school is now done, and there's six children in there already. I might even need two schools. We'll 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 see. Uh-huh. Skyjacker, looks like you are out of tasks. Let's find something for you. Let me go hunt something. Um, ideally something hostile, but... Oh, yeah, we have, uh... Oh, God, sandworms? No, I'm not going to be able to kill sandworms on my own. Sandworms are, um... Are very hard to kill. I'm going to need uh, two or three specialists to kill them. Or to rally all the guards, all the town guards. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Yeah, let's do that. So here's what I'm, this is what I'm gonna do. I am going to What's send up? all my town guards out to this area here. And unfortunately for me, um, the sandworms decided to spawn in pairs, which is gonna make it um, more difficult to deal with. So what I'm doing is I'm enlisting a bunch of my colonists as um, guard post guards to increase the amount of combatants that I can have. And uh, then I'm ordering them all to sort of rendezvous to a shared point. Because the more people I have fighting at once, the less damage I'll have for each individual. You know, safety and numbers and all. So, I've just employed six new guards to come help me with this task. And you guys want me to prioritize uh, pollution removal. So, the current priority here is burning... You are in burning skies and pollution tech. Got it. So bartering uh, that I have right now is part of pollution tech. So after bartering, I will get concrete scavenging, which is required to build a uh, uh, environmental protection project. Uh huh. Look at him slide. All right. All right. So Skyjacker, you're going first. Are these guys? Yeah. I don't know why those guys have uh, icons of being carriers because they're not. And let me try uh, changing the radio again. Wild Frontier time. Seems appropriate. If I remember to, you can remind me to change radio periodically as well, but if I remember to, uh, I'll, I'll continue to change over so you can hear the different uh, soundtracks. And before Raid comes in, it might. The thing is, um... You know, I, I gotta deal with these sandworms sooner or later. I like how they're screaming. Yes. Bandits in the oh god, there are bandits! Oh my god, who called that? Ah, <laughs> uh, why? All right, everybody here, go away. Retreat! Oh my goodness. All right, so there's, it's actually not technically bandits, it's just like hungry people, but still, the timing could not have been any more ridiculously bad. Okay, so, uh... These people have clearly been through a lot. They look frail and are likely easy to overpower. The look on their faces makes it clear they're desperate enough to do anything. So we've gone through one of these before. They're just asking for some some potato. I guess this time it's not medicine, it's potatoes. But um, God, the timing was perfect. What if bandits show up while I'm fighting the sandworms? Insert bandits that show up, uh, which we're just going to kindly feed for money. That money allows me... It's actually really smart what you voted on there because that money gives me enough money to recruit the specialist that comes in a day. So it has a hidden benefit, I suppose. All right, back to sand warming. Dune must die. The Fremen would be happy or maybe impressed that I'm killing a sandworm. They're very, very tricky to kill, and I have to be uh, attentive of the HP of the combatants, which currently I'm having a hard time selecting. All right, Lee, get out of there. I, it's very, very tricky to check the individual health levels of these dudes, but I'll do my best. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, you look like you're being attacked. Oscar. Yep. Go away. Okay, one down, one to go. How may I help you? Sounds like one to go. One down, one to go. Uh, now that they've maybe changed targets. Who are you attack? You're attacking this one? He has a little bit of health to spare. Yeah, you can see why I rallied so many forces for this. Now, as I, um, I do have two scavengers getting shotguns and rifles. It would make this fight a little easier because currently I'm fighting this fight with, um, crossbows, right? Which are not effective weapons. But there we go. We have killed them off. And, um, that's, uh, wait, is there a sandworm on a sandworm? Oh, no, it just didn't register. That's 107 sandworm meat that now I can get. And now that I've done that, uh, let's fire the... Oh, there's two sandworms over there, too. Dang. Let's fire the guards in the guard's post, because they can go back to hauling or whatever they want to do. They don't need to uh, continue fighting. Mm -hmm. So this area is definitely considerably more safe. Can you make mortars? No. And you can't make little sand thumpers, either. It's too bad. If you haven't seen Dune yet, uh, I'm not spoiling too much. Don't worry. I'll, I'll stop, too. It looks like it's starting to warm up. It also looks like my food storage is maxed. Uh, so if my food storage is maxed... Let me furlough my fishermen. And... Set up additional food store. Uh, so that would be a food warehouse. And I could put a food warehouse... Hmm. Let me think about this. It would be best to put food warehouse uh, where I'm going to grow in the future. So I'm going to put a food warehouse over here. Even though it's nowhere close to anything right now, eventually I'm probably going to have farms out this way, so... I might as well increase my food stores uh, for down the line when I do have food being harvested out here. Oh, there's a berry bush in my way. And here is the new recruit, Brock. A... Ooh, he is very good at scavenging, too. He costs 900. Man, he is pricey. Do we recruit Brock? Yes or no? He costs almost discovery. all of our currency. But that's okay. And I just finished bartering research. So let's get a trade post out. So trade post allows me to trade with other... Um, other colonies, and I'm going to put the trade post... Uh, does it fit here? Yeah, it perfectly fits there. I'm going to put the trade post here near the front gate, because it kind of makes sense. That's where we're going to be entering and leaving. Phaser, uh, Stathen, and Sir Rollins. Thanks for... Uh, or Sir Roland, thank you for the... the follows. So here's a good example of my um, my recycling people being furloughed because the plastic is full. I, um, I have as much plastic as I kind of need. So I'm going to furlough them myself purposefully. And uh, All right. yeah. let's something. head out to the plane. So some choices here. And I'll read it. The plane looks like an older model airliner. Its fuselage snapped clean in half. Both wings are mangled and partly overgrown with vegetation next to a large crater. Skeletal remains can be seen from the underbrush. It's possible to grab quite a lot of stuff, especially if trampling over the deceased. Uh, one, the deceased don't care. 
two, show respect, or three, abandon the quest. Okay. Minus 10 happiness, but I did gain uh, 40 components, 40 parts, and 300 currency. Quest complete. And the quest is fully complete. And I'm gonna have, Sorry, uh, can't do that. I'm gonna have Harry Larry head back with the components. Components are um, mostly used in electricals, which is gonna be useful for heading to pollution research, which is what you voted up top. So let me update this, Burning Skies is done. Uh, where current priority is to get pollution tech. Yep. Uh, Fangface yes. is almost done getting all the hunting rifles, so she'll head home when she does. Your command? Big Nate still has yeah they both have one more thing as shotguns and rifles to grab now unfortunately uh that made everyone sad here so i'm gonna have a little bit of a a hard time keeping people happy for a bit until that wears off but you guys did vote yes to uh get brock yes. uh skyjagger i'm gonna send him out into the world because he's a scavenger and Brock is going to now be raffled so let me reset the edge eligibility raffled out and we're going to keep him fighters verily very rarely when I play become um, you know set holders because everybody needs a good fighter so he's also a really good scavenger actually yes He's a... Uh, funny enough, he's a better scavenger than my scavenger. So you know what? Skyjacker, you stick around. And Brock, you head out. Your command. Alright, what do I want? Uh, let me think about that. Hmm. I want you to murder some, some more rats. How's that sound? Yes. And you're gonna be joined going by Harry happen. Larry. Let's murder some people. Oh, and uh, it's no longer cold, so I'm back to not looking like I'm in the Revenant. Yep. Uh, quick question for you all. Should I make a settler? If yes, I'll have you vote on who would become a settler. Should I make a settler? So the advantage of a settler here is I could either settle a tile for um, scientific research, like a uh, an observatory tile, or there is one other alternative. I could settle out here. No, actually, I can't settle Lushton. So this shopping center here is impossible for me to utilize because it is occupied by Lushton, uh, meaning that I can't create an outpost here because Lushton already exists. So yeah, I could. it would be for a scientific settlement. And probably the best person to do that would be Big Nate, but uh, the choice will ultimately be up to you. Ready. All right, let me get my foresters working. Oh, also now that it is um, warmer, turn on the farms and move my foresting to this cluster of trees. Marvin, thanks for the resub. What's up? And Skyjacker, what are you, you're gonna go kill some deer. You know what, actually we have too much food, so I don't even know what I want you to do. Um, Harvest these sandworms. This is gonna take you a while. I'm waiting for a little bit more science for concrete scavenging. And then once we get concrete scavenging, we can start working on electricity, uh, giving me the two things I need to make my uh, pollution control building. Here is my new food storage. Let's also upgrade these outhouses.
What are you doing? What is this worker working on? Oh, they're foresting. Okay. I was like, why are you standing next to the pollution seemingly killing yourself? But yeah, no, that makes sense. I'm going to nudge it over a little bit so they don't do that. Alright, Fang Face is done. Got the hunting rifles and some currency and is going to actually okay. swing by the museum even though they don't get a lot of science quickly. Um, there's no one nearby Shotgun. that does it faster. Uh, Big Nate finished getting the shotguns. Big Nate is going to head home with them. Brock, who has yet to be raffled, you have a little bit of time to be eligible. Engaging hostile. Orders. And Harry Larry, going Engaging to beat up hostile. these dead rats. I don't actually even know oh, what the hell. dead rats are protecting. I just know I want to get them killed. And yeah, I can fire my empty tank. Thank, thank you for the reminder. I have, uh, I have a bunch of spare colonists right now, so it's not that important that I fire them. But it's not a terrible idea either. And I see that I'm... Um, oh, let me stop cutting wood in the logging camp so that I can build more wood up from my uh, my my lumber yard and now that I have a trade center I can do trade deals so here's how they work here are the two other communities that I have access to. Uh, initially, I think what I'm going to want to do... Oh, I do need firewood in the cookhouse. Hi, Gubin. Thank you for the reminder. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is let me buy some research from Lushton. So they can offer up 287 research. And I'm going to see if I have anything important for them to trade. So they are... They, yeah, so I need to give them at least 612 of value. I can either give them actual resources, but let me, uh, I have a lot of food. I'm going to sell my crickets and my, um, mealworms, because, yeah, who needs them, right? Give them cockroaches, and I'll keep my prime meat. Yeah, keeping the stuff that matters. So now I'm only giving them... I'm going to sell them some fish, too. I'm going to sort of food bankrupt myself, because now that my farms are going, I should be all right. So I'm selling them fish, cockroaches, mealworms, crickets, and waxworms. Um, they're going to give me 131 coins and a reputation bonus for trading with them. I hit confirm. I hit confirm again. And then they're going to send a car over to me to perform the trade. And it will take one day and 17 hours to do. And if I go out to the world map, or oh, pan over to Lushton, uh, we should see, yeah, here's the caravan and the arrow coming to me. Kind of like, uh, kind of like civilization. Should I make a settler? Um, if it's a tiebreaker, I'm going to say no. So I'm not going to make a settler yet. Uh, oh, I got to see that. Nailed a burner. Nailed my lumberyard, which sucks because I'm very low on lumber. It also nailed all of these tents. Once I start to get a, a little bit of um, an abundance of wood, I can consider uh, setting up the shanties, the next tier of housing. But obviously, I don't have enough resources at the moment to do that. A shanty, if you're curious... Uh, cost 45 wood each, and I don't really have any wood to spare. Plus, I just got pegged by the uh, uh, meteor shower. Hey, Tristan. Oh, and I'm being raided. I have Wolfgang raiders coming to kill me. So let me quickly queue up some guards in my towers to be able to defend against these raiders, and then I'll shout Tristan out. How you doing, Tristan? Oh, Cheese already did it. You're playing some PZ? Who are you playing on PZ today? So what's going to end up happening here is um, some of my buildings, because I didn't have the guards uh, in position in time, are going to get uh, damaged. 
hopefully not fully destroyed. Usually these raiders don't fully destroy st stuff. And then what ends up happening is if they do enough damage, uh, they will claim victory, but I don't have to necessarily lose everything. Oh dang, uh, Skyjacker's already over here. Kind of getting beat up. I'm going to have Skyjacker fall back. Because Skyjacker's not doing so well. Going for help. And then let me uh, lay into my pause button and micromanage the other guards. Making sure that these other guards are uh, getting dispatched to where the combat is. Because the guards... Unless you micromanage them, only really guard within their sphere of their guard post. But you can, like you like you see me here, um, and like I did with the sandworm, you can tell them what to do directly. And then I also have the gate guards as well, who one of which is already in the fight. Probably they both are. No, one's traveling to the fight already, so. And the problem is that um, Skyjacker is really, really low in health. So I might just have to continue running with Skyjacker away yep. so that Skyjacker doesn't end up dying. I think you might. Let me check something. You might be able to cheese it so that you um, can create a settler with someone who's about to die. And, uh, and prevent them from dying. So if Skyjacker doesn't have a chance to live, I could always cheese that and turn him into a um, into a settler to deny the bandits a, a kill. But here, I have my town guard coming out. And let me go to the uh, living beings overlay, and it will be a lot more clear who's who. So some of my non-combat colonists uh -huh. are involved. Hey, you. Stop. Stop. What, where, where are you going? How may I help? All right, let me have Skyjack to keep falling back. And as you can see, the normal colonists, I can't issue orders. Ooh, I might need to convert Skyjacker into a settler to avoid being grief murdered. Because they might keep chasing me. We'll, 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 we'll see. Unfortunately, okay. So you are Harper. Let's have you fall back. You're too hurt. And whoever this is. Oh, you're full health. You stick around for a bit. I'm just trying to micromanage this so I don't have any more losses than I need. But this is uh, one of the reasons why you would want to keep uh, a good fighter in your colony. Because um, right. Skyjacker here actually is a pretty good, good, good fighter. I take that back. But just keep running. Let's take a look here. George. This bandit looks dead. That bandit looks dead, so attack this bandit. Lillian, attack that bandit. She's already doing that. Cool. Uh, so, for this to work... What's up? Oh, you're at 16 health. I'm probably going to have to have uh, Skyjacker loop back onto himself so that I can lead the three that are pursuing him uh, into the loop. Uh -huh. So I'm going to have Skyjacker break from this path to the right to try to lure these raiders back into my colonists who are going to put them downrange. <laughs> and it seemed to have worked. Now, one thing I've noticed in, in combat situations, let me put the red light on, is um, 
uh, the bandits do sort of like lock on to a specific target and then they don't let go. So that's uh, that's why I have Skyjacker run in these big loops to prevent uh, to prevent death. And if I get down to like low single digits, I'll uh, I'll make sure to convert to settler rather than have them die. Because if they die, they I don't benefit from them at all. All right. So I think this northern group is just about sorted. Yeah, this northern group is done. This northern group fully died. So I'm going to have um, the guards in the north double back, protecting Skyjacker from being followed by this last few. But I think they're almost all dead. So all Skyjacker has to do is run past everyone. And... Uh, the micromanagement isn't easy to do. Uh, and on easier difficulties, it might not even be all that necessary because um, you don't have fights that maybe require it. All right. All right, so that one's dead. And I'm going to need to do another loop with Skyjacker. Because as you can see, uh, they are just chasing me no matter what. So I'm going to loop around this pond and have my fighters wait on the other side of the pond. Because I have the advanced knowledge of where I'm planning on heading, but they don't. All right, back out yep. here on the map tile. You keep doing what you're uh -huh. doing. Big Nate, what were you doing? You were coming home with those shotguns. Okay. I really could have used them moments ago. Yes. Yeah, these last two raiders are about to run into a, uh, a firing squad. And I managed to keep Skyjacker alive. All right, so all of you murder that bandit. Hey, don't turn around. One more shot. There it is. And now the last one. Cool. I think we're done. Colony under attack. Still? Where? I see a red dot... here? Oh yeah, there's one more bandit there. Okay. Uh, all of you converge on this last bandit. Yes. But, Skyjacker, uh, you go sit near the town center. Now that your pursuers are dead, I'm not going to jeopardize you in the last fight. So there's only this one bandit left. Nice, we did it. I can probably clear the red light <coughs> as it's like a one versus six. Huh? Not much of a fight. And that is definitely the advantage of having multiple guard posts. Definitely have multiple guard posts because without being able to immediately add six more guards, um, I would have been screwed. <laughs> what happened to Brock? Brock was, uh... Who did Brock raffle off to? Did I even raffle Brock? Did I forget to do that? Alright, let me reset the eligibility and queue up the, uh... I, I got distracted. Reset the eligibility and queue the raffle timer again. So there it is. This is for the Brock, Brock raffle. And I believe I didn't lose a soul. Yep. God, it came damn close to it. Um, but no, no one died. I'm gonna have uh, Skyjacker help to repair. I, I would send Skyjacker out here to uh, loot the sandworms, but there's a, a small possibility that there is hostile fauna out here that might wander in and kill him or her. Uh, and I don't want that to happen. So I'm, I'm gonna play it safe. Huh? 
Hi, Yaman. Welcome to the stream. So I did just sell a whole lot of crops, so it might not be a terrible idea to continue adding to my farm here. So I have space for like two more farmland. And we killed the bandit group. We won the bat. And I'm gonna have uh And it's a Shoot. Alright, so I'm gonna send Brock home. What's up? And have Harry Larry loot the tools okay. that are there. So that I can uh name Brock after one uh -huh. of you guys. And now that uh now that Skyjacker's healed up a little bit. I'm gonna have Skyjacker and Brock uh, get the sandworms. Can I loot the raiders? I believe. No, uh, I don't think you can really loot the raiders for anything. I think um, they might, if they were armed, maybe give you guns. But I don't think that that's the way it works. All right, so another potato, another vegetable. Oh, you know what? Uh, scratch that. Um, I'm going to do double flax. Which, because I queued up crops, I'm going to just destroy the farm fields and put two new down. Because uh, I'm totally out of fiber, and fiber is what makes clothing. I'm also almost out of tools, so it might be a good idea for me to get a tool shop going as well. So let me queue one of those up. Put it uh, here. Actually, that's a, not a great spot. Get a better spot. My burner's here. I'll put it there. Nope, not there. I'm picky in particular, even though it doesn't look like it. It's a good spot for this. Maybe just right here. I want it somewhere where it doesn't freeze. So somewhere within the circle here. So there's the tool shop. Uh, what is this strange plant? Could it be useful? A strange gleaming plant has been found in the woods. Oh boy. So, uh, find out if it's edible, find out if it's medicinal, compost it, use it as fertilizer, and throw it away. What are we going to do? What would you do, Yoda? I know what Yoda would do. He would pee on it. 100%. 100% he would just pee on it. He would find out if it smelled good with him peeing on it. That is the Yoda way. Alright, medicinal. The plant is ground up with water and tested on superficial wounds and rashes. The plant has no effect. Wasn't medicinal. Well, at least it didn't kill us. Although, two people just got irradiated, so... Uh, maybe it did. <laughs> We've made a new discovery. Okay, so we did just make the discovery of concrete. Scavenging. So, where do I have concrete out here? I have, uh... I got concrete ruin here. I got concrete ruin here. And here. So I have more concrete ruins to the west than the north. So I'm gonna put a concrete scav... next to this guard tower and stick a dirt road in that sort of goes to the ruin like that big face thanks for the reset you haven't been turned into a scavenger yet or a settler rather your command so congrats on that too and the raffle timer finished. Freddy Eight Toes. A good name for Shoot. an irradiated raider. Freddy Eight Toe. <laughs> I like it. 
thematic. Uh, so another thing that I could do to improve, uh, improve the efficiency of this um, concrete zone is to build roads out to the ruin sites. And then also, oh, I don't have general storage, never mind. But now that that's researched, we're trying to get pollution tech. So the next thing about pollution tech is to go to solar power. Because uh, for the environmental tech here, now let me let me show you what we're traveling. So for hazmat engineering, I need power and concrete to be able to build it. So I need it. I have the concrete now. I need to get the power, and then I'll get the prerequisite research. I don't know what Yoda's doing, but I'll just leave him on there. Thank you for tuning in to Surviving the Aftermath, which originally streamed live on Twitch. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to all my Patreon patrons and Twitch subscribers for supporting the channel, and also viewers like you. I'll catch you in next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, everybody.